Hello, Internet. A little bit later than intended, but uh, welcome back to part three in our ML.Markov tutorial series in Max MSP. Uh, I am still alive. <laughs> I've been continuing my postgraduate studies. I've moved house, and I, I guess there have been one or two other global events of note as well, but let's not worry about any of that. You're not here to hear all my excuses about why it's taken me two years to upload a video. You're here for Markov chains. So when we left off last time, we had built this system here using the excellent uh, ml.star library and its ML Markov object. Uh, and if you need a refresher, I would have a watch through both of those videos because that will then give you a grounding in what we're going to cover today. Um, but we'd set up this system with five separate Markov chains to read and analyze MIDI files so that we were going to get pitch, velocity, uh, number of notes in chords, uh, length be between new note onsets and length of individual notes. And then it was going to learn from those and produce new pieces of music in the style of the MIDI that it had heard. And as promised, now I have put all of that together into a patch with a user interface that you can load using the B patcher and do whatever you like with it. Now, as usual, you can download this from my website. Um, the link will be in the description. Um, but I'm going to just walk you through how this works now, some of the little tweaks and uh, quality of life improvements that I've made to it. Um, so if we go out of uh, presentation mode, you can see it's still, the guts of it is still pretty much the same patch. And um, if you want to go through and uh, work out exactly how each of these bits work, then feel free. But I'm just going to explain how they work in the context of the user interface. Um, so let's just get it doing what we were doing with them last time. Let's load up a MIDI file. We've got some dedicated buttons just for that now. We'll load up um, Claire de Lune again, because that's what we were using last time and we know it works quite well. Um, I've put a little tutorial, little steps here to the right in case you uh, want to do, you know, want to go through it and uh, can't remember exactly what I was saying in the video and don't want to have to rewatch the entire thing. So we load the MIDI file um, and then we set which elements to train if necessary. I'll get onto that in a minute, but we'll leave these all toggled on for now. Um, and when we play MIDI, as it says, this will be at 20 times speed. And if you remember, the reason we're doing that is because we don't want to have to sit through the entire piece, and listen to it every time that we want to train. Um, so to account for that, we've got this training data speed box here. And that's set to 20. So it's to account for the fact that we're playing it in 20 times more, 20 times uh, quicker than normal. Um, but we can actually alter that if we like to just being one times in case we want to actually send some MIDI into it using a keyboard or using any other external MIDI device or even just through Max through you know, an algorithmic MIDI generator of any kind, in which case you're just playing it in at a, a normal speed and you would set training data speed to one. And I'll demo that again in a minute, but for now, because we're playing in Claire de Lune super quick, we'll leave it at 20. So I'm gonna route it out to Logic again, just into the grand piano. Uh, we've got a note out dedicated here, which we can just set to on max one. And then I will turn logic down just so that we don't get another rest of these headphone users moment. And we'll start playing it. Yeah, it sounds exactly as it did last time. <laughs> so we can set the order as we did last time, which if you remember is how many previously generated steps or states uh, the Markov chain considers significant when choosing a new state to generate. So we can set that for each of the individual elements if we want them to be different, but also we've just got a global order box up here. And for Claire de Lune, I'm just going to set that to three because that works quite nicely based on what we've seen before. And then we'll just click build and it will start building. It will take um, anywhere between sort of 30 seconds and a minute, depending on the uh, the speed of your computer and whether you've got uh, multiple bits of uh, video and audio recording software running in the background. Um, so when that is completed training, we'll come back and hear what it sounds like. There we go, that's done. So let's have a listen to what that sounds like. I'll turn logic back up a little bit. And in fact, when uh, we were testing it out in the past, um, I noticed that the velocity tended to be a little bit low on the generated stuff. So we've got a, a just velocity box here where we can bump it up a little bit and only do about 20. But again, test it out for yourselves. Let's have a listen to that. Yep, sounds pretty similar. Sounds like it uh, still works the same way. 
And while that's uh, generating stuff, I'll walk you through a couple of the other little additions. So for instance here, we've got a speed box, and that does exactly what it says on the tin. We can slow it right down. And that will adjust the length between the new onsets and the length of the generated notes as well. So that's quite a nice little extra option to add. And then we've also got these... I'll just let it play this for a second because it gets quite, uh, <laughs> quite excited sometimes. There we go. Yeah, so now we've also got these two toggles here for follow trained onsets and follow trained note length. And these are both toggled on by default. But if we toggle this one off, we'll notice it's now following manual onsets. So currently it's playing a note every 400 milliseconds. And we can obviously increase that or decrease it. And it's still following the trained note length, so even though we're getting this very, you know, repetitive starting of new notes, the notes are of slightly different length, which is kind of quite nice. But we can also turn that off and specify manual note length, and make it all super long as if you've just permanently got the pedal on. Or we can make it really, really short and get some nice staccato stuff going on. silly now, so let's just let it play what it wants. Lovely. So that is the Markle chain exactly as it was before. Let's load another one in and have a listen to that. So we'll reset it first, and sometimes it'll take a second to reset because it's wiping all of the data. So let's load in something completely different, like the battle music from the first Pokemon games. Uh, now, because this is ever so slightly more sort of repetitive in terms of like rhythm and everything like that, we can probably afford to bump the order up a little bit. I'll try four. Uh, you can even try higher if you want, but the higher you put the order, the more likely you are that the system is just going to just repeat verbatim the music that it heard originally. So just play around with it, but every time you uh, change the order, you'll need to rebuild it. Um, but obviously we haven't played that in yet. I'm going to change the instrument, I think, because I think we do, yeah, deluxe modern, I think. Uh, yeah, electric piano sounds better with this. We'll uh, turn that velocity down and play that in and hear what that sounds like. <laughs> Excellent. Right, and then we'll start that building. Oh wow, that did it basically instantly, that's fun. Um, great, so uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's have a listen to what that sounds like with uh, Pokemon. So it's kind of, it's, you know, it's a lot of fun. You can do that with it. Great, so let's reset that. And as promised, let's quickly demo the uh, MIDI in, so using a MIDI keyboard to play it. And I've got my keyboard over here. Let me just change the order. I'm going to change the order down to two. And then we need to change the training data speed to one. I'll put this to something else. I'll put it onto uh, classic Wurlitzer sound. And yep, so that's reset. And now I will start playing on my keyboard. I'll do a little bit of um, like jazz by Mike Cornick. Give me two seconds. So that's now done, so now let's try building it. There we go, 
Yeah. I think that built almost straight away. It didn't even turn into the spinning beach ball of death. Let's have a listen to that, hear what that sounds like. So that that's kind of cool. That was with very little actual training data. So it's just doing sort of weird jazzy noodling now. So hopefully you can already see how that you can start playing lots of different things into this and get it generating some quite interesting stuff with very little effort needed. Now the bits at the bottom here, I wanted to demo how these work because when I was um, playing around with this, and I'm just going to reset it and load in a file to demonstrate what I was talking about, um, I wanted to try playing in a piece of Scriven, and this is his, one of his etudes, Opus 42, number 5, um, and I found a really good uh, MIDI file of that. The links for all of these will be in the description, by the way. This is the page where I got Claire de Lune from originally, and this resource here has loads of custom music MIDI files. And down here, as it says here, we've got Etudes Opus 42 and then number 5 here. Um, as it says, outstanding sequences, and they really are. It's uh, I'm assuming it's taken from uh, a live performance because it is absolutely gorgeous. Really, like there's lots of um, rubato, lots of push and pull. It's a very expressive uh, performance. But as a result, when I was training the marker chain on it, um, it seemed to... I mean, it didn't sound bad, but what it was generating, certainly rhythmically, seemed very sort of messy and a bit structureless as a result of the, you know, the expressive performance. Um, that probably goes without saying, but let's uh, let's just play it in, uh, get it training on that so you can hear exactly what I'm, what I'm talking about. Oh, before I play it in, I should probably change the training data speed to 20. Let's not forget that, otherwise it's going to get very confused. Let's play it in now. <laughs> it never fails to make me smile hearing these pieces playing in super quickly. Uh, yeah, so now let's build that. There we go, that's done. So let's have a quick listen to that and hear what it sounds like. Come up with the last two again. So hopefully you can hear what I'm talking about, but it's not necessarily bad, and you know, the pitch information is still really interesting. And we could probably just set the um, set it to manual onset. Which does sound a bit better, but then maybe defeats the purpose of having the Markle chains there in the first place. So I was thinking, what well, I really want to be able to use the screw in, so how about We've got five different markup chains. We don't necessarily have to train them all on the same piece. So what if, so we reset it, and I was thinking, what if I have, you know, these toggles that then allow you to route what MIDI is going where? So that's, uh, yeah, so now we've, we're playing the screw in again, but this time we're going to toggle off onsets and note length. Play that in. Turn the rusty down. Lovely. And then we'll load in, so just loading Claire de Lune again, because we know that works quite nicely. We'll turn off these three, but then turn on Onsets and Note Length, play that in. Sorted. And then it doesn't actually matter whether we turn these on or off before we build it, but I'll turn them all on again anyway. So let's start building it, and that will probably take about minutes again. There we are, so now let's have a listen to that.
Now this might just be down to personal preference, but I think this sounds infinitely more interesting. And if we think it's a little bit slow or languid at the beginning, we can always just bump up the speed. So there you have it, a mark of chain system where you can train the different elements on different pieces. So get that downloaded, start feeding in different MIDI files to it and play around, see what cool stuff you can come up with and send me, send me a link to it. I'd love to hear some of the stuff that you're able to make with this. And in fact, on some of the, the comments I received on Facebook and YouTube from the previous videos, people were asking, well, what about, can you do this with multi-instrumental MIDI files? So let's say, you know, you've got a a whole, a whole piece with several different instruments. Can you just play a MIDI file like that into this and get it producing stuff from there? And the answer is yes, but but actually no, <laughs> because it it's like it's it's going to be very chaotic. And depending on how the MIDI file has actually been set up, you're just going to get a lot of undesirable stuff being generated. So you can do it, but you have to do a little bit of pre-processing first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this down. Um, we need to choose a, an example piece so that I can demonstrate this. So I've got a, a new patch here. And I chose, because I thought it sounded quite nice, uh, the Green Hill Zone theme from the first Sonic the Hedgehog game. And you can find that MIDI file along, along with a lot of other uh, video game MIDI files from this Kingdom Hearts Insider website. There's multiple different arrangements of it, but this uh, Green Hill Zone 5 version 2 that uh, is on here, that's the one that I felt sort of best orchestrated the Green Hill Zone theme as it as it should be. So let's open that up and have a listen to it. Yes, we'll close that, that's fine. And then when that opens up we'll see it's got quite a few instruments. Here we are. Um, and you may need to mess around with this a little bit before you can even play it. Like, for instance, this English horn instrument here just doesn't play on my copy of Logic for whatever reason. So I found that just dragging the, it's the lead melody, just dragging it up to this FM piano that plays a little bit of the intro. That seems to work perfectly well. And then I'll delete that track. And now let's just have a quick listen to this for the sake of argument, just to hear that it really is the Green Hill Zone theme. <laughs> That's Sonic, and that sounds pretty good. Hopefully not uh, not so good that it earns me a copyright strike, but you never know on YouTube. Um, so how can we process this so that we can get it playing using the Markov chains? Well, what we need to do is we need to just have a look at what instruments we actually need and what instruments we actually want to train. So we can, we can actually do quite a lot on this. So for instance, this little grand piano bit up here, that's just a sort of placeholder MIDI file for the formatting that we don't actually need. It doesn't have any musical data in it, so we can delete that. And likewise, we've actually only got six instruments here, but a lot of them are sort of spread between multiple tracks. And in fact, this string ensemble, its only purpose is to just double one little line in the bridge section that's already being played by the brass. So I'm not going to dedicate an entire Markov chain to it. Let's just delete that entirely. And it still sounds perfectly good without. But then the others, we can just concatenate them all down. So for instance, here we've got these two FM piano parts. We can just highlight them both, right click anywhere on the MIDI, and then under bounce and join, we'll have join. It's up here because I've used it before, so we click on that. And then it makes them all into one nice coherent MIDI file. Let's delete that unused track. And then we'll do exactly the same with all of the synth brass. Let's just combine those all down. Okay. And delete the unused tracks. And then finally, we can do the bells. Combine those and delete the unused tracks. So now, well, when we started with that big sprawling piece with lots of different uh, work moving parts, we've now you know, paired that down to five individual instruments, so that's a lot more manageable. And just to confirm that I haven't fundamentally changed the piece, let's just hear a little bit of it again to hear that it is still in fact sonic. <laughs> It's 
still sounds good to me. So let's take each of these MIDI files and export them, save them as MIDI files. So we can right click this and under export, there's export as MIDI file. Again, it's appearing up here for me. So let's save that. Let's put it on the desktop for now. Let's do GH drums for the first one. Group GH for Green Hills, obviously. And then this one will do GH bass. And GH uh, lead. And then use very light. Let's just put on one to all them. And then GH. Brass. And finally, GH bells. Fabulous. Now let's go back into Max and we can bring up, and uh, obviously, this is how you can load in the markup chain into other patches rather than just opening up the patch itself. As long as you've downloaded it and put it in your Max file path, you can just do B patcher and it's called markup underscore chain underscore UI. There it is, and now we can drag the box to show the entire thing. You don't need to include that tutorial -y bit on the right. You can just drag that to there. Now let's duplicate that so we have five of them. Lovely. And you may notice there is an outlet for them, and that's a way of sending the MIDI out um, into if you have Max Instruments that you want to play with it, rather than routing it out into Logic or Ableton or anything like that. Um, and in case you want to do that, you can toggle off the note out here so that it won't send anything out to either the inbuilt Max synth or out to any other uh, source. But obviously we're routing it to Logic, so we'll leave that toggled on. We'll toggle these all to from Max 1. And now we do need to do a little bit more um, working out of, what, of um, how to route the MIDI in Logic. Now in Ableton, uh, in Ableton Live, and as you can see from the icon down there, I recently started using that, um, this seems to work with no hassle whatsoever. You just choose the, the port for each instrument and it works fine. But for Logic, when you're using the from Max um, MIDI file, MIDI channel rather, you can't select port. If you would think that you could just do one, two, three, four, five for these instruments, but it doesn't work. It doesn't recognize the individual ports. So you actually need to manually set up the MIDI environment, which sounds like a bit of a pain, and it is, but it doesn't really take that long. So let's just go through how to do that quickly. We go to Window, and then Open MIDI Environment. Now, if you don't see this option, it's because you need to go to Logic Pro X Preferences, go to Advanced Tools, and then ensure that Show Advanced Tools is checked and MIDI is checked here, because otherwise that option won't show up. So now that we've got that, let's go to Open MIDI Environment, and then we can see it almost looks like the mixer, but we've got these bits here. So now if we do a new, do make a physical input, and this is this big thing here, we can drag this, let's get it over to the left so it's away from all of these other bits and pieces. Yeah, and then finally we do a new channel splitter. Ah, we'll back and stay where it is. So you'll notice on the edges of each of these, there's bits that almost look like the end of patch cables. So we don't want the top one because the top one is sum, and the second one is from my MIDI interface, but the third one is from Max1. So that's our MIDI channel. So let's take that and route it into this channel splitter. And again, the top one is sum. We don't want that. The second one is one, port one. We'll send that straight into the drums. Two into picked bass three into the lead synth, four into the, oh, I've done that wrong, hang on, three into the FM piano, that's it, uh, four into the brass. In fact, I may need to delete that and do that again, just because I may have rooted it into a couple of different places, never mind. Cool, so from max one into there, yeah, one into the drums, two into the bass, three into that one this time, that's a from piano, four into the synth brass, and five into the bells. Lovely. So as I say, yeah, it's a bit annoying that you have to do it this way, but it doesn't really take that long. So let's now close that down, and now this will work. But what we need to do is set up, let's just do a global toggle that we can send into the first inlet of each of these Mark of chains, and that will do the generate new states. That will toggle that on or off for all of them so that we can have them all in sync. 
And likewise, let's just do a bang for the third inlet, which is to build micro chains once they've heard everything. Uh, the second inlet is if you want to send in MIDI from within Max, um, in case you just want to patch something else into it, in case you're not using a, a MIDI file or routing it out from outside. And let's actually do one more bang into the fourth inlet, which is to reset them all in case we need to. And finally, the fifth inlet, which we're not going to use here, is in case you want to change the overall speed. Lovely. So then let's load in the correct MIDI files. So for the first one, we'll do load MIDI, we'll go to desktop, we'll do GH drums. The second one, we'll do bass. Third one, we do the lead. Fourth, we do the brass. And for the fifth, we do the bells. And then before we start playing those tracks in, we need to set up the MIDI ports here. So we've got, we can do this to one, this one to two, this one to three, and then to four, and then to five. Nice. And uh, then let's, uh, yeah, let's make sure this is turned down quite a lot because uh, as you're about to hear, we're going to get some interesting sounds. Okay, instant last beat. And then bass. And lead. The brass. Oh, hang on. Ah, now occasionally this happens where it uh, it carries on playing, a note just hangs, and it's probably just the way the MIDI file was formatted, a note off hasn't properly been sent. If that happens, it's really easy to fix. Just right-click, delete the track, say OK, that'll stop it, and then you can just edit undo, and that'll come back and it will have uh, stopped that MIDI from playing, so that's fine. That occasionally happens, it might have just been that the MIDI file wasn't formatted properly, but that's fine, it's an easy fix. And then finally, bells. Okay, so that's all done. We'll set the order probably to four again. That should be should be reasonable. We'll just hear what those sound like, and then we can build them all. And even though we're training five uh, Markle chains at once, because the complexity of the data is relatively low, um, it should train fairly quickly. There we go. It, <laughs> it trained even before I stopped uh, stopped talking. Brilliant. So let's start that playing and hear what a Markov rendition of Green Hill Zone theme sounds like. I mean that's that's kind of a kind of a cool little drum drum pattern that we've got there. Reasonably repetitive, but it, it kind of works. And then let's hit the bass. Nice, and then the lead. Let's just hear that by itself. <laughs> it's interesting it's got all these gaps in it, it's just clearly something about the uh, rhythm that it's learned. We could always set that to manual on the on sets if we wanted to. Brass. <laughs> and then the bells. Nice, and then it's them all together again. Absolute insanity. Now, it doesn't always sound wonderful, but that's partly because there's, you know, several different parts to the Green Hill Zone the piece, and uh, one of the bridge modulates, for example. So if they sort of get out of sync from that point of view, then you're going to get some interesting polytonal stuff happening. But again, depends on the data and how you pre-process it and what data you actually choose. So that's an example of how to use the markup chains with multi-instrumental MIDI files. You just need to do a little bit of work beforehand to get it to get it to work properly. 
So I hope that's been interesting. I hope that's been cool. Please do give this a download. Let me know what you do with it. As usual, leave a comment with any ideas or thoughts that you have on this or how it could be used. Um, and I really do appreciate the comments. I don't reply to all of them, but I have been reading all of them. And uh, I just want to say thank you all so much for bearing with me um, with this, uh, this long delay between videos. But I do have more plans to upload more stuff in the future. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. And uh, I will see you all in the next video. Bye.